Hey everyone, this is Jason Dinger back with the fifth video in my series on how to design board game modules in Vassal. In this video, we're going to cover how to add uh, extra boards. Could be a player board, could be what would be a hidden window like your hand of cards you don't want other people to see. We're going to add both. We're going to add a, a player board that everyone can see something that might be laid on the table and uh, a hidden window. So we're going to go up, we're going to right click on the actual module at the top, add map window. When that comes up, we're going to change the name here. We're just going to call this Blue Player Board. From there, uh, right here it says can contain multiple boards. That might be something uh, you might use in certain games. We're not here. I'm just going to change this. If you remember the, one with the main board tutorial, I like the highlight to be a reddish color. Uh, the toolbar here, the show or hide, that's going to come up later. Uh, we're going to check it. I can't change it now. Uh, that'll all happen after I reload the module because making changes like this with the artwork and all, it has to compile. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up the board, go to the map board. This is the same as when we did the main game board. So we're going to go down, add a board here, just call it, you know, blue player board. Then we're going to go ahead and select the image that we want. I've got this basic image up here. It's got the A and the B uh, spaces where we'll be placing our bids or our bets. So now that that's done, uh, we're going to go ahead and go up here. We're going to add zoom capability. This is all things we've done in the previous videos on boards. We're moving the ones we don't use. And remember, I use the quarters, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. And we'll make uh, 0.5 for the, the initial there. We'll leave all that the same, same as we did before. We're going to save it. Here, we're going to go ahead and uh, close everything out. We're not going to run it. We've got a button up here that says map, but again, None of that will uh, will function because we've added the art. We have to reload it. You're going to see it's going to populate up in that top left corner here, right there. The progress bar, and that pops up, and drag that over. Now if we run the game, what you're going to do, you see it says uh, the, the button's not there next to where a piece would be. But when I do, it's got a button up there that says map. So resize everything real quick. And when I hit that, now I've got my blue player board up here. So everything functions as I want it. I can close the blue player board, hitting that red X there. And when I hit the map button, it'll bring it back up. So everything functions. I'm going to show you how I can drag pieces here, the cubes that we created in a previous tutorial, drop them on that player board. And when I hit this X, it hides it. It's not closed like you think of closing a window. When I hit the map button, it comes back and everything's still there. So we're going to go ahead and close all that down. Now I'm going to show you how I'm if I want to use text, if I don't have images, I don't want the word map up there. That's just generic. I want it to say what it is. I want to say it's a blue player board. So I go in here. I'm going to go to the properties for the blue player board. I'm going to wipe out where it says map. I'm going to put in blue player board. You'll see uh, right below that it's got an area where I could select a button icon. We're going to do that in a minute. But right now, uh, maybe if you just have text in your prototype and that's all you need. So we're going to save it, file, new game, and now you see it's changed to blue player board works just the same. I click the button, it comes up. If I close it, you know, close everything out. Now we're going to go and we're going to add art. So not only to the player board, but also you'll see I've got this gray cube button right here and I've got my blue button. So instead of the word pieces up top for where my, my cubes and all are, I'm going to change that also. So we're going to go to blue player board. We're going to wipe out the words there. All right, we're going to go select our image. Pick the blue button, just a generic little blue button I drew. It could be whatever, maybe a picture of a meeple or whatever's on the player board. So we'll save that. We'll go to the game piece palette, bring that up. Right here, we'll wipe out the button text pieces. We'll select and we'll grab this gray cube I have as just a generic little artwork for that button. Hit OK, save. Now, remember, we, uh, you see it's updated up here. So when I bring that up, the buttons function the same, but now they look a little nicer. Uh, maybe, you know, could have gone with something different than the red background on the gray, I guess, but it works. Um, so, again, everything in this module is just something I threw together. But you can see the, the button works just the same, and the zoom capability, you know, that works just the same as we did in the, the main board. So, closing all that down now, uh, what we want to do, I want to show what happens if you know the blue player board it's a map window it's something it's like a player board on the table everybody can see but what if you had a you know a hand of cards you didn't want somebody to see so that map window where in this case we're going to make a red player board in order to do that 
we have to define the player size. Right now, blue player board can be seen by anyone. So we're going to get into creating a private window. Before we do that, we have to define the sides. So we're going to define, you know, just blue and red, two simple player colors that we're going to have here. Now that that's done, we can go add a private window. So we're going to save that. And now everything in here, you know, all of these objects can be seen by everyone. We haven't defined anything specific. But if I drop down here and I go to Add Private Window, so right there towards the bottom, Add Private Window. So now this has something we haven't seen before. Most of this is similar, you know, but at the top, belongs to side. So I can tell it what side it belongs to. In this case, I'm going to say red. So we're going to hit, we're going to hit add. I'm going to go change the, uh, as visible all players know, I'm going to change the name to red player board. And the rest of the settings are going to be pretty much the same as what we've done in the past. I'm just going to follow suit with, in this case, I'll go ahead and, you know, pick maybe a bluish color since the background I have is going to be a pinkish red. We're going to check that. Again, remember, it's not going to allow us to uh, edit everything right now. So we're going to save it. I didn't add a map board. Remember, we talked about this in the past. Um, so I'm going to cancel that. Let's see, drop down, add a board. I'm going to go ahead and name it Red Player Board. And I've got this generic, you know, reddish, pinkish uh, square that I've got for it. So we'll hit OK. Hit Save. And now we close it, relaunch it. And what you're going to see when uh, the, you know the buttons, remember they're not there until we launch. When we launch a new game now, I can pick a player side. If I pick red, all right. Now I've got the button. Remember it says map by default. I haven't changed that yet. We're going to go back, but I can see that. And I can see this. You know, nothing there now. It's just pink. The blue works just the same because red can see everything. Pieces obviously everyone can see that. So we'll close it down. We're going to go edit that, uh, if you remember how we did in the past, same thing, we're going to go add zoom capability. This is all the same as we've done in the past, just removing it, adding the quarters, and then setting a new default, uh, or initial, excuse me, as 0.5. Now we'll come up here, we'll wipe out the text. We're going to pick, I've got a, a, a red button, same thing as the blue one that I made, so we'll add it. Hit OK, save. Notice you see the, the buttons up there. So we hit New Game. If I drop this down and pick Red, I've got my Red button activated. I can click it. It's all there. So just resize. All right. So that all works the same. I can take pieces. I can drop them on there. It works just the same as the regular blue player board. The only difference is the only person who will be able to see it is the player logged in as Red. The way Vassal works, only one player can log in for a particular side. So if I drop down, you know, go and I pick blue now, you'll see that red button's grayed out. No matter what I do, I can't click on it. So I can never see it. I can see the blue all day long. I cannot see the red. So again, this would be something very useful for if you had a, a hand of cards, um, maybe some, um, some hidden tiles or a bidding game where, uh, say, um, key flower, where the meeples you have, they're hidden. I could come up here, I could add blue. Okay, I can insert, I can remove. If I did all that, then blue would be able to see it at a later time. If, if something changed in the game as you're playtesting, in this case, we're not going to do any of that. One thing I'm going to show real quick on the uh, main map window, I added two more at start stacks. Uh, you'll see those on the board. I didn't show that in the video. It's the same thing I did with the coins. It's just a bid card A and B where you would drop cubes. So uh, that'll wrap up this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thank you again for watching.